to another review. This week, I have, as always with me, Mr. Chin Doctor himself. Hey guys, how's it going? And of course, I am planting 42. I'm doing fairly well. I can't even remember people's names. It's going to be a great <laughs> review. <laughs> I know it's that at the beginning. At least everything else is written in front of me. That makes it so much easier. Anyway, <laughs> the game that we're reviewing is Armored Freedom, uh, published and developed by Killer Bees Games. It was released on October t- October sorry October fifth, uh, twenty eighteen, for a price on the U.S. market of nine ninety nine. It is a turn based strategy card and board genre game which i would agree with all of those because that's exactly what this is yeah yeah it's definitely not pushing any boundaries no um the time estimate on ta is 10 to 12 hours which sounds about right for what i've put into this so far yeah yeah that feels maybe with that glitch that you are found in mission three it might be a little quicker but well, well, I'll talk about that a little bit further down. It's happened to me and now in every mission. So, oh, interesting. I think it's just a thing. <laughs> but anyways, um, the the plot of this game is I'm assuming some point in the future. I'm not even sure if it's our universe. Uh, battles are fought in giant mechs instead of using traditional ground troops on hexagonal grids. Um, but the point of some of these battles is dubious, if you ask me, and like just having to hold things for a short amount of time yet while there's still enemies in the field. In any case, the <laughs> plot is a little loose. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's, look, it, it's just enough to get you from one mission to the next, really. <laughs> it's not it's not uh, engaging you too well. It's, it's not an adventure game, so honestly, the fact that there's not much of a story to this doesn't really matter that much. It, it's the, the game is in the gameplay, thankfully. Um, the achievements for this in in armored freedom are actually pretty straightforward if you ask me uh, complete the missions kill enemies progressing amounts of use action cards which is landing on a particular hex on the board and wins uh the wins is noteworthy because as we mentioned it seems like once you complete a mission you can then load that mission up again or replay that mission and then just pass your turn and regardless of the outcome, you get a victory screen and a notch toward your 100. And if for some reason the enemy decides to attack you, you'll get an attack on top of that victory screen. And no matter how it ends, you get another victory screen. And that's now two wins toward your 100. I don't know <laughs> why. Happened for me on every single mission <laughs> I replayed. Yeah, it's it was weird. It happened to me on mission six the first time I played it. So I finished mission five, moved on did mission six that happened i was really confused and it kicked me back to the main menu to choose my next mission and i'd done it i was like okay not gonna argue with it It, it's you know 10 minutes off my off my clock it's really weird though yeah um i take it back it didn't happen for me on all the missions because i was able to replay mission one for kills but yes, missions yeah. three, four, and five, at the very least, all for me when replayed, just gave me free wins. <laughs> Your mileage may vary. <laughs> okay, so now we'll uh, we'll talk about the gameplay a little because it, it's it did stump both of us for a minute, really. Even though there's a nicely laid out rules section, there's so there's still a few things that don't quite work as such. Um, So the hexagonal grid that you are playing on has different spots of land and different types of land that give different positive or negative bonuses. Um, They might increase your attack damage. They might increase your your defense, your range with your weapons, or they might decrease those uh, stats. Um, Your defense and attack is made up of random cards that you get. Uh, so they'll be numbered from 1 to 12, except for number 10, which is numbered as 1 as well, because they couldn't figure out how to do a 0, I guess. <laughs> that <laughs> that one was confusing me for a very long time because I was using, you know, 9s and 8s, and this 1 kept beating me, and I could not figure out why. Um, but essentially, you attack with a number, your opponents will defend with a number if they have a defense card, and if your attack has a higher number than their defense, you win, 
and you will do damage for attack minus defense. Uh, the way you move around is by rolling dice. So you have two d6, and however many numbers you get is how many movements you can make. Um, and if you get a double, so a double one through to double six, your attack for that round will be increased by the number on the die. So one for a double one, two for a double two, six for a double six. So they're really helpful. Uh, if you get a big number early on, you can just eliminate a mech immediately if you're lucky. Yeah, definitely saved me a couple times. Probably also worth mentioning some oddities with the hexes. Um, some of the hexes give you attack increases. Some of them give you defense uh, increases. If you're on a defense increase hex and you successfully win the battle, you, you, you defend yourself from, a, from an enemy attack without taking damage, you'll actually gain health over and above your starting HP based off whatever the defense hex was. So like say say like the the enemy attacks you for eight you defend with a with an eight card so it's nothing but you're on a, a a hex that gives you plus four you just gain four life and I don't really know why it does that but it does that oh I could not for the life of me figure out what was going on where I was getting more life than I could have I yeah because I I remember seeing the pop up saying he did negative minus yeah, four damage negative, <laughs> negative minus four i'm like and so and i'm like okay <laughs> that's never happened to them but yeah it's, it's definitely something that you can abuse to uh to build up your max if you're finding that you're having a a, a, diff, a tough time taking out one or two of the enemies ones also yeah. the those pickup cards the action cards i would almost say for for the more difficult missions if you're having a hard time with them make a beeline for those things and just use them worst case scenario mm -hmm. you you screw yourself you have to start the, the mission over on the other hand it has this habit of just destroying enemy mechs which is a really good mm -hmm. thing for you yeah definitely that, that most of the uh kill all the other mech missions where there was lots of mechs i just said stuff it i'm just gonna get the action cards and take out a few to begin with and then work from there because it's yeah much easier than trying to hope that you have the right cards three or four times in a row to whittle their health down no agreed it's it's all literally down to luck with which cards you're given you get cards randomly after an attack or a defense at the beginning of the game so it, it, you have no idea what you're gonna be working with until you actually have the cards dealt yeah. but it does kind of keep things even i suppose and it it, it brightens it up a little bit by, by kind of giving you a little more variety so if you replay the missions it's not going to be the same every time you play so there's that going for it yeah so it's just disappointing when you have in your hand three one attacks and a two attack and you go cool i can do nothing for four turns well, I... as long as those one attacks in your hand are lasers <laughs> <laughs> secret turns yeah oh man so i i i I don't want to say this is a bad game, but the grind at the end has sullied my opinion of it somewhat. So you will be done with the missions probably in a couple hours, depending on what glitches you get. I reckon if you, if you played from start to finish, maybe two, three hours, you'll be finished with the missions. And then you've got the grind. Um, the action cards are easy. You need to get 50 of those for the highest achievement. They're easy to do because you could probably do that all in one match if you just don't worry about killing the bad guys. Uh, the wins, as we've said, are pretty easy. The big grind comes from killing 100 mechs. Yeah. Now, for whatever reason, using an action card to do that will not count. They have to be by your hand, which is frustrating because that does lengthen it. Um, and that's what pushes it to that eight to 10 hour mark is three to four to six hours of grinding against the first mission usually is probably the easiest because it's, it's four against two. And yeah, just just replaying that one mission over and over and over again has probably dropped my opinion of this game. It's, it's mind numbing. No, I'm, I agree with you there. Um, I mean, I, I guess, and even then graphically, you know, it's, it's definitely, it's, it's not a, 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 a really good looking game. It's very simplistic. It, it is literally the gameplay is what you're getting the game for. That's, then that's that. However, for the, 
I have this weird like dollar per per like hour of gameplay being a good idea, and so like if, if it's a ten dollar game, ten hours of gameplay is means you get your monies out of it. Yeah, you yeah. definitely get your money out of this game. Um, granted, at least half of your money's worth is a really boring grind. As long <laughs> as you know that going in and are okay with it, yes. Um, so I think personally, without a sale, this is not a bad game worth looking at if you're into the the, the turn-based strategy genres otherwise yeah. if this does go on sale i think it would have a broader appeal for more, more people yeah definitely unfortunately there's no local multiplayer either true but for what it is armored freedom was not a bad little game no definitely